discuss the remaining questions of paper 2 extended of May June 2023 in last class we have discussed from question number one and question two till question number nine and if you have missed the lesson you can see the link in the description let's move to the question number 10 question number 10 is that uh, the diagrams are given to us uh, describe fully the single transformation that maps shape A onto shape B. So for shape A onto shape B, what we have to do, we have to find out, we have to see first of all that is it enlargement? No, it is not enlargement because both the shapes are of same size. Now we will see that is it translation? No, it is not translation because it is not shifted to any other point uh, and we can see that they are uh, opposite to each other now the next thing is we have to see that is it reflection this will be the sequence we have to follow but first of all we have to see in every described question that first that is it enlargement then we have to see that is it translation then we have to see that we have to confirm that is it reflection and at the end we have to see that it is rotation rotation now here we can see that this one is not enlargement nor uh, translation so we have to see the reflection for how to see the reflection how to check the reflection that we have to connect the corresponding point and find out the middle value this one is the middle point of these two points now one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven means five point five one two three four five so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so five will be this will be the midpoint Similarly, we have to find out the midpoint of this one. So we will see that all the points of object will have the same midpoint with the image. So this will be the proper line. This will be the proper line or we can say that this will be the mirror line. So this one is reflection where y is equal to 2. So we can say we have to write that this one is reflection at y is equals to 2 or the or reflection along y is equals to 2 or re reflection and the mirror line is y is equals to 2 let's move to the second part rotate the shape a 90 degree clockwise about the point minus 1 and 2 now first of all let's see that what will be the center of rotation center of uh, center of rotation so center of rotation for this case is minus 1 and 2 what does it mean minus 1 and 2 means we have to see all the points with respect to this center of rotation now let's let me give you the names to these points let's say this point is C 
this one is let's say D E and F it's not necessary but just for the sake of understanding I'm just giving the names to each one of the vertex or each one of the point now as we can see for point C we can see that these will be the line we can see that if we draw uh, if we choose a horizontal and vertical path so this will be the line is it now we can see four one two three four four units right and one unit downward and if we use the same path as we have to move it uh, clockwise 90 degree clockwise so we have to shift it to here the straight line the four units down and one unit to the right we can say this that this shape this these two lines will be rotated 90 degree clockwise like this so the corresponding point of c will be c dash over here similarly let's find out the corresponding point of d so for d we can see that this will be one two three four units down or right and then one two three three units towards this side so we have to rotate it clockwise and uh, one two three four let me move these two lines this will be the corresponding point of C one two three four and if we rotate it if we move to the to three units towards the right side so this will be this point will lie somewhere here because if we rotate this line this will be some something like this now this will be the next point so we can say that this will be the corresponding point of D, the image point of D. Let's move to the next one, the E part. So for E1, we can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have to shift this line like this. So one, uh, 5 units downward, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, four five and then five units uh, towards the right side so this will be one two three four five so this will be the corresponding point so we can say that it, it this will be the corresponding point of e so this will be the corresponding point of e now let's see the point f so this will be this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then downward. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have to move this these two lines clock 90 degree clockwise. So this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then then this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this will be the corresponding point of F. So the final answer or the final image will be like this. Let me draw it. So this will be like this. We have to use the scale and this will be the rotated shape 90 degree 90 degree clockwise so yes this will be the rotated shape now enlarge the shape a by the scale factor minus 2 and the center is 2 and 0 center is 2 and 0 we have to enlarge it where the center is 2 and 0 so keep this thing in your mind that we have to follow the three steps if you want to enlarge it, let's say the coordinates of C is 3 and 1, 3 and 1. First of all, we will find out uh, the, the corresponding point of C. So this will be 3 and 1. Let me recheck, reconfirm. Yes, 3 and 1. First step is we have to subtract the center from this point. So the answer is 
one and one. Let's move to the next step, the second step. So the second step is we have to multiply the scale factor. So if you multiply the scale factor, so this will be minus two and minus two. Now the third step is we have to add, we have to add the center. So this will be minus two plus two is zero and minus two. So it means that the corresponding point for C will be zero and minus two. X axis zero, Y axis, so Y axis minus two. Let's move to the next one. That uh, this will be uh, D, the coordinates of D will be three and minus one. So for D, we have to follow the three steps again, uh, three and minus one. Let me reconfirm. Yes, three and minus one were the coordinates of D. So the, we have first step is again, remove, uh, subtract the center. So this will be one and minus one. The next step is multiply the scale factor. So this will be minus two and two. And the third step is add the center of enlargement. So this will be zero and so this will be zero and plus two. Zero and plus two, yes. Zero and plus two means that this point will lie somewhere here. Let's move to the point E. So for E, we, we can see the coordinates. For E, we can see the coordinates again, that the coordinates of E will be four and minus three. Four and minus three. So the very first step is we have to subtract the center, which is minus one and two. Then if we subtract it, this will be three and minus three, then multiply it with minus two. So this will be minus six and six. And the last step will be, last step will be add again, minus one and two. If we add it again, so this will be minus seven and eight. So minus seven and eight means that this point will lie somewhere here. Let me recheck the calculations, four and minus three. And okay, no, 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 the center is two and zero, two and zero. This point is two and zero. So we have to do the calculations again. This point will be two and zero because the center of enlargement is two and zero. So we have to subtract it. So this will be, if we subtract it, so two and zero, so this will be two and minus three. So if you multiply two and minus three, so this will be minus four and uh, plus six. Then if we add again two and zero, two and zero with minus four and plus six, so this will be minus two and six. So minus two and six will meet, which means this point will lie somewhere here. Let's do the same process for the coordinates of F. So the coordinates of F will be six and six and minus three. Six and minus three. So for F, six and minus three, we have to follow the same process. That first of all, subtract the center. So this will be four and minus three then multiply it with with the scale factor so this will be eight and six and then eight and six with two and zero so this will be six and six so six and six means again we have done some uh, six and minus three tha, and then two and zero so this will be four and minus three scale factor was minus two. So if you multiply eight and six, so this 
so six and six so <clears throat> this will be the third point six and six so if we enlarge the shape if we enlarge the shape there is some mistake we have to reconfirm it so there is a little correction over here that this point is four so if it is four so this will be minus eight and plus six so minus eight and plus six we have to add this one so which means that this will be minus six and six so minus six and six means that this point will lie somewhere here now this will be the shape after the enlargement when the scale factor is when the scale factor is minus uh, when the scale factor is minus two this will be the enlarged shape okay so this will be the enlarged shape for the third part this will be the final answer let's move to the next question question number 11 the diagram shows the shape abcd formed by the sector of two circles with the same center zero o, o. both sectors or angles are 140 degrees oc is 3.2 cb is 2.6 the area of the shape is k pi so first of all we need to understand this thing that let let me re, uh, let me write the data over here so the radius of the smaller sector is 3.2 the radius of the larger sector is 3.2 plus 2.6 so this will be 5.8 centimeter and we know the angle angle is 140 so theta is equals to 140 degrees and uh, now we know that the area of the shape the area of the shape is k pi so overall we can see that the area of the shape area of the shape will be equals to area of larger sector larger sector minus area of smaller sector smaller sector i hope that this thing is clear now how to find the area the formula for the area is theta divided by 360 into pi r square as you can see that we are using the we are finding out the area of the larger sector which means that we have to use the radius of the larger sector so this will be capital r so minus area of smaller sector so this will be theta divided by 360 pi r square now here we can see that this one is the area of the smaller sector so this will be small r because we have in the very beginning we have discussed this thing that the radius of the smaller sector is represented by small r and the radius of the larger sector will be represented by the capital r now as we know that the area of the shape is k pi so we can write we can directly cancel out the uh, the pi over here that here we can see we can take pi as common so k pi is equals to we can take pi as common so and theta divided by 360 pi as common so this will be r square minus r square now we can cancel out pi because it it is on the both side so k will be equals to theta is 140 degrees divided by 360 into r square capital r is 5.8 square minus 3.2 5.8 square minus 
to square the area area of the smaller the radius of the smaller sector so now if we use the calculator we can easily find out the value over here now we can see 140 you add with 360 into 5.8 square minus 3.2 square bracket close the final answer will be 9.1 so k will be equals to 9.1 this will be the final answer let's move to the next question question number 12 question number 12 we can see that one solution of the equation is this a and b are both positive integers greater than one find the value of b so and and the value of x is 8 so it means that the equation will be a into 8 square plus b is equals to a 181 now this will be a into 64 plus b is equals to 181 and finally we can write b is equals to 181 minus 64 a now they have mentioned that a and b both are positive integers so which means that a will be positive integer greater than one greater than one means the next inti positive integer is two the next positive integer is three the next positive integer is four five six and so on so we can use any of them uh, but let's use the, the integer two so integer 2, we can use the integer 2. So if a is equals to 2, so b will be equals to 181 minus 64 into 2, which means 181, b will be equals to 181 minus 128. So 181, 181 minus 128. 128 so this will be 53 b will be equals to 53 this will be the final answer write down the other solution of the equation this so other solution of the equation solution means we have to find out the value of x and here we can see that the one value is 8 so this is a quadratic equation so the other value will be minus 8 we can verify it also uh, we can use let's say the equation is a x square plus b is equals to 181 so a is when a is 2 uh, we, we are not sure about x square let's say plus b is 53 is equals to 181 so if we simplify it further is equals to 181 minus 53 so 181 minus 53 will be equals to 128 so 2x square is equals to 128 and then x square will be equals to so if we take square root on both side so x will be equals to plus minus 8 we have already mentioned uh, plus 8 in the at the top so the final answer will be minus 8 over here the other solution will be minus 8 now keep this thing in your mind that this working is not the requirement of the first solution this working is not the requirement this is just to verify that you will we will have two solution one is eight and the other is minus eight just to verify otherwise if it is a quadratic equation and one solution is given that x is equal to eight the other solution will be x is equals to minus eight let's move uh, to the next one question number 13 a b c d are the points on the circle a b is parallel to d c angle a c d uh, chord a c and d b intersect at e find the value of x now we can see that uh, these two lines are parallel a b and d c which means that uh, this angle will be 32 degrees the next thing is that we can write it as that angle EAB is equal to 32 degrees because they are alternate alternate interior angles. 
alternating angles or alternating interior angles so alternate angles we can just write alternate angle now the next thing is that this angle 32 is subtended by the chord ad and similarly this angle will all, is also subtended by the chord ad this will also be of 32 which means that angle uh, we can simplify that sum of the angles of all triangle will be equals to interior angle of a triangle will be equals to 180 so x plus 32 plus 32 is equals to 180 which means x is equals to 64 x plus 64 is equals to 180 and x will be equals to 180 minus 64 so 180 minus 64 this will be equals to 116 so the final answer will be 116 this will be the final answer let's move to the next question question number 14 f of x is equals to this so y is equals to find f inverse of x so y is equal to 5x plus 2 so y minus 2 is equals to 5x which means y minus 2 is e divided by 5 is equal to x. Now x is the subject. So x is equal to y minus 2 divided by 5. Now we know this thing that y is equal to f of x. That is why we have replaced this thing. And similarly x is equal to f inverse of y. We have to write it over here that at f inverse of y is equals to y minus 2 divided by 5. So is it the final answer? No, it is not the final answer we have because we have to find out f inverse of x. So what we have to do, we have to write it over here. f inverse of x will be equals to x minus 2 divided by 5. So this will be the final answer. Let's move to the next question. Question number 15. C is the point and D is the point this. Find the midpoint. So for midpoint, what we have to do? 5 plus 13 divided by 2. And then minus 1 plus 15 divided by 2. This will be the formula. So this will be 18 divided by 2. 14 divided by 2. So this final answer will be 9 and 7. Let's move to the next one. Find the gradient of CD. So for gradient of CD we know that y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. This is the formula for the gradient. So y2 is 15 minus minus 1 divided by 13 minus 5. So 15 plus 1 divided by 13 minus 5 so this will be 8 so 16 by 8 which means 2 this will be the final answer let's move to the C part find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of CD so perpendicular bisector of CD means let's say this is the line CD and uh, we have to find out the perpendicular bisector means that this will be the midpoint of CD and we have to find out the equation for this line as we know that if two lines are perpendicular it means that the product of their gradients must be equals to minus 1 so as we know that the gradient of CD is the gradient of line CD we know that uh, this one is CD so this will be equals to minus 1 by 2 similarly the midpoint we know the midpoint is 9 and 7 so we can see that we will have two points first one is the gradient of the perpendicular line is minus 1 by 2 and the one point is 9 and 7 so we can use the equation y minus y1 slope point form into m into x minus x1 so 
So from here we can see y minus 7 is equals to minus 1 by 2 into x minus uh, 9. So if we rearrange it, if we further simplify it, so this will be y is equals to minus 1 by 2x minus sorry, plus 9 by 2 plus 7. So 9 by 2, 9 divided by 2, 9 by 2 plus 7 will be equals to 23 by 2. So the equation for this one will be minus 1 by 2x plus 23 by 2. This will be the final answer. Let's move to the question number 16. Write 0 0.621 as a fraction in its simplest form. You must show all your working. So this will be, uh, it, it is of three marks question. So we have to attempt it like x is equals to, uh, let x is equals to 0 0.621. This dot means that it will continue like this. This is 0 0.621, 21, and 21, and so on. So how to simplify the questions like this? So first of all, we have to uh, multiply it with 100 on both sides. So 100 on both sides. So this will be, 100x is equal to 62.12212. So, and so on. Now, the next step is we have to subtract the first one. x is equal to 0 0.6212. And so on. So if we subtract these two equations, so this will be, uh, this portion will be 99x is equals to, now we will focus on the other one. Be very careful that we have to cancel out these two till here. This will be, as we, it is subtraction, so this will be cancelled out. So 62.12. .62 minus 0 0.62 so this will be equals to 61.5 61.5 and then this will be 99 so x will be equals to 61.5 divided by 99 so divided by 99 so 40 x will be equals to 41 by 66 this will be the final answer. I hope that the concept is clear. Let's move to the next question. Question number 17. The diagram shows a triangle with an acute angle marked X. The area of the triangle is this. Work out the, so it means the area of the triangle is this. So the area of the triangle is equals to 1 by 2 into adjacent side multiplication of adjacent side into sine of their included angle now here we know that the area is 2143 is equals to 1 by 2 into 90 if so we can directly multiply it over here that 92.5 multiply by 71 so this will be equals to 6567.5 Six, six, five, six, seven point five, sine of x. Now, if you rearrange it, two one four three multiply by two. So, two one four three multiply by two, divided by sixty five, six three five, sixty seven point five, is equals to sine of x. And further, we can re if we rearrange it, so this will be x will be equals to sine inverse of 2143 multiplied by 2, all divided by 6567.5. So we can use the calculator over here. 
2143 multiplied by 2 divided by 65 67.5 and then we have to take inverse sine inverse of the answer so this will be 40.738 which means 40.74 x will be equal to 40.74 so this will be the final answer. Let's move to the question number 18. Make x as the subject. So how to make x as the subject? First of all, 2x minus 5 is in the division. So we have to write it like this. 2x minus 5 is equal to 3x. So 2cx minus 5c is equal to 3x. Now we can write 2cx minus 3x is equal to 5. As we have to make x as 5c, so we have to make x as a subject. So we can take x as common. So 2c minus 3 is equal to 5c. And finally, if we shift this expression to the other side, as we can see, x is multiplying with this one. With this one. So x will be equal to 5c divided by 2c minus 3 2c minus 3 so this will be the final answer i hope that the concept is clear so that is it for today's class uh, in the next class we will discuss the remaining questions so today we have discussed from question number 10 to question number 18. Thank you so much.